In the world of academia, scientists are struggling with some of the biggest questions we ever dared to ask. For example, just how did the universe begin? How did life begin? But in Flat Earthland, Flat Earthers are struggling with some big questions of their own. We don't know what air is. Physicists grapple with the question, what will be the fate of the universe? Is time travel possible? Meanwhile, this Flat Earther shows he is also confused about air. Air is stuff, can you touch it? Will physicists ever find out where all the antimatter went? Or if indeed we can find a unified theory of physics? And will these flat earthers ever find out the answer to their questions? Who owns the moon? Which of the dwarves from Snow White was the tallest? Now while this picture suggests that Sneezy may have been the tallest dwarf, flat earthers have another more important question. Can scientists explain away flat earth's greatest proof? The black swan. Well, the short answer is yes, because obviously Flat Earth has no proof. But before we start to look at what Flat Earthers think is the best proof they've got, we've got somebody here who wants to disprove gravity. You ready? Sure. Brilliant. Off you go. Um, see? Take my old phone here. Shit. Right. Fantastic. Uh, anyway, let's move on, sure, because with me, I have another Flat Earther who thinks he can debunk Newton, Einstein, and gravity all in one go in what I can only describe as... The greatest debunk ever. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest gravity debunk by a flat earther ever. So here we go. Blink and you'll miss it. Newton's equation tried to describe to us what we see, whereas Einstein's work was more about why we see it. It isn't. They're not mutually exclusive, as many flat earthers would have you believe. Yeah, you know what? I've really got to admire the coolness of someone who can debunk some of the greatest minds who ever lived without feeling the need to show off and explain how he did it. It's truly a unique personality trait. Anyway, I've been getting a bucket load of messages lately from Flat Earthers telling me that the globe has been destroyed and this picture that they label the black swan is the reason why. Now, I first became aware of this picture when I was watching Flat Earther and, for legal reasons, all-round nice guy, Quantum Eraser. You may remember him from such quotes as... Conspiracy cats, crayon munching Mr. Magoo. Or you may have seen him before showing off his artistic talents like he did in this picture here of fellow flat earther Nathan Oakley that he recently sent me. It's good that, mate. Well done. Should be proud. I gave him five feet. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can I possibly do a video on the Black Swan without having the man himself here live to discuss it with me? So please, everybody welcome, Quantum Eraser. I didn't say I was ready yet. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I didn't realise you were still in the toilet. What are you doing in there? Number two! Right, lovely. Just, uh, let me know when you're done, yeah? This is gonna leave a mark. Oh, God. I can't even breathe properly. I should definitely keep that door open for fresh air. Okay, so as we wait for Quantum Eraser to finish, uh, I wasn't joking before about the number of Flat Earth comments I've been receiving about the Black Swan on my channel. I must have received over 200 gloating comments about how the Black Swan has destroyed the globe. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I like to take comments and turn them from the mess they arrive at me in into something just a little bit more beautiful, hopefully. So this is what I have done with them. And a very, very special thank you to Doomhammer for rendering the 3D cap you're about to see. Black Swan Shh, Black Swan Whispering Black Swan Do this flat, we have the Black Swan Hundreds of Black Swans and a 30 mile horizon And my asshole's been blown open wide Cause ballers run from black swans, the black swan destroys your globe. Black swans there everywhere. Just keep ignoring the black swan. Just have to say black swan. Oh, one more thing. Welcome to the flat earth. Sorry, baldy cats. But all your arguments are lame You're an ignorant, no nothing buffoon At least I know the gas is not sticking Black Swan And that's all I'm gonna say Cause I don't know what the flipping heck I'm talking about Hundreds of black swans and a 30 mile horizon 
And my asshole's been blown open wide Cobras run from black swans Cause black swans joy should glow so a big thank you again to Doomhammer for rendering the 3D cat. I really, really love it. And again, thank you to all the Flat Earthers who've taken the time to help me write that song. Now, Quantum Razor, are you finished there or not? Not. What are you doing? And number four. And number five. Right, anyway, just remember, we've run out of toilet roll. For fuck's sake, man. Uh, anyway, while we're waiting for him to finish, let's take another look at the black swan. Now, the first thing that strikes me about this picture is just how bad it is. But to actually explain why it's meant to be proof for the flat earth, let's welcome back Quantum Eraser to come and talk some nonsense to us. Here is the actual argument. If P, then Q. Not Q, therefore not P. Listen closely to the argument, Globies. I know, yeah, you really did just hear a grown man say that. Uh, Quantum Eraser, what are you doing now? Gravity isn't a force sounds like he's straining a bit uh anyway let's see if he can manage to make his explanation just a little bit clearer this time now here's the argument if the earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet that's the geometric horizon Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. If we know the observer height, we should be able to calculate how far away the horizon on a globe Earth should be. And then we can compare that with what we see in the photograph to see whether it matches up. Got it. So, how tall is your observer? Observer's height is one foot. Right, so your observer is one foot tall. So as it turns out, the world's shortest photographer has taken a photograph of these two oil rigs. And from the observer height of one foot, the horizon should be less than two miles away. But that is clearly not what is shown in this photograph. The relevant numbers are on the screen. There's the kill shot. There's what they call CGI. And they think this thing's a boat. <laughs> Unbelievable. So to simplify the argument, we can see too far. The horizon appears to be behind that second oil platform about 10 miles away, so the Earth must be flat, yeah? Of course not. I'm going to put this photograph through what I like to call the honesty test. And to do that, I'm going to take a photograph of my own that destroys the flat Earth. So as soon as the lockdown rules were relaxed, I jumped in my car and I headed to a place called Ram's Bottom. And I entered from the south. In Ram's Bottom is a famous tower called Peel Tower. Everyone can find it on Google Earth. I walk from the tower over this fence here and I put my camera in this spot. So there's the camera, there's the fence, there's Peel Tower. Okay. Done. Now if you use these coordinates on Google Earth, you'll find exactly where I was at an elevation of 355 meters. Now from that position, I took this picture of Jubilee Tower over in Darwin. Jubilee Tower, or Darwin Tower as some people call it, can also easily be found on Google Earth with an elevation of 373 metres. This means that if I was on a flat Earth and I was looking at Jubilee Tower from Peel Tower, I must be looking up. But my theodolite says different with this black line here representing Jubilee Tower and this red line here just making it a little bit easier for you to see the marking on my theodolite. And surprise, surprise, the theodolite tells us that even though Jubilee Tower is at a higher elevation than my own currently, I am looking down upon it. This is no doubt due to the curvature of the Earth, so Black Swan, take that and ram it right up your ram's bottom. Now, if I was going to behave like Quantum Eraser, I could take that photograph and I could upload it onto YouTube and I could claim that that is it, definitive proof of the curvature of the Earth. But that's not really very honest of me. I think we know that there are questions, serious questions that need asking. Questions like... Could clouds be made of salt? No, not questions like that. In fact, never questions like that. No, uh, I mean questions like, did I have my elevation heights properly confirmed by independent surveyors? Did I have the distance between the towers similarly confirmed by independent surveyors? Uh, what were the atmospheric conditions? How many times could I repeat this observation? Was my theodolite that I was using really reliable? What was the margin of error in my results? There are so many questions I could ask about this observation. It would be dishonest of me to show that one photograph and claim that that one photograph alone was proof of anything. 
So just how well does the black swan photograph hold up to questioning? Well, the answer is not very well at all. And to show you why, I've brought somebody in who has made hands down the best videos on the black swan on YouTube. His name is Blue Marble Science and have linked his channel in the description. And I'm sure over the next four minutes, you're going to see exactly why he is well worth a subscription. I particularly love the final shot of this clip. Take it away, Blue. A flat earther named BMLSB69 shot two videos from a beach in Southern California. These videos are of two oil platforms a few miles offshore. The videos were made a few days apart by the same individual from the same location, but they are made under very different atmospheric conditions. On one of the days, the atmosphere was relatively clear and you can see a crisp horizon line and the platforms appear undistorted. Now according to BMLSB69, this is what is normally seen. But on a different day when the atmosphere is unstable, you see a very different image. What you've been watching here is a video made by BMLSB69 on one of those once in a while days when atmospheric conditions are right to allow you to see further than you normally would. There's a very well understood phenomena called refraction that causes light to bend slightly as it passes through changes in density in the medium through which it travels. Essentially, as atmospheric refraction increases, the rays of light coming from a distant object bend downward in a way that begins to match the curvature of the Earth, and that extends the distance along the surface that we can see. Large ships have been able to see each other over documented distances of 80 miles or more under just the right conditions. So this isn't unheard of at all. We know it happens. Now the Flat Earthers extracted a single frame from this video calling it their black swan image and proclaiming it to be proof that the Earth can't be a sphere. The horizon is behind both platforms. This is that image. The black swan theory basically states that if you hold the position that all swans are white, it only takes the discovery of one black swan to disprove your theory. But there's a problem with that here. If we had never seen this phenomenon before, I suppose you might call it a black swan, but that simply isn't true. We see this all the time. It isn't what we normally see, but it happens. So take a closer look at this image. The platform on the left is called Habitat, the one on the right is called Hill House. This is what they look like up close. Now look at the distortion in the flare pipe here and compare it to the undistorted image here. Look at the distance between the bottom of the platform here compared to the undistorted view here. The amount of refraction present in this image is clearly extreme, but we know that happens from time to time when conditions are right. Now let's have a look at a video of the same platforms in conditions BMLSB69 calls normal visibility. The difference is striking. The platforms are very clear. The horizon is a crisp, sharp line that is obviously well in front of both platforms, but it's obscuring more than 30 feet of habitat and about 15 feet of hill house. Any curve calculator predicts this under normal atmospheric refraction. So is this a black swan? No but it is an attempt on the part of the flat earthers to misrepresent what's being seen as a black swan. What they've shown is a distorted image that proves refraction extends the distances we can see. It's simply an image we fully expect to see under those conditions, nothing else. On the other hand, this normal image of the same platforms is simply impossible on a flat earth. If the earth is flat, the horizon can never be in front of any object, ever. It's simple geometry. The horizon has to extend beyond every distant object all the time. Just imagine yourself standing on a flat plane looking at a distant object. No matter how far away that object is, the surface it is sitting on will always extend beyond it. But that's not what we see with distant objects. We normally see the horizon obscuring all or the bottom parts of ships, buildings, oil platforms, mountain ranges, or any other object far enough away to be beyond the visible horizon. We see that every day. We see it all over the world. So you tell me, 
Are these flat earthers being dishonest with their black swan? You be the judge. By the way, notice anything missing here? Blue Marble Science, again, thank you so much. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for that clip. And again, I've linked his channel in the description. He's well worth he's well worth a subscription. I am sorry, while that clip was on, Quantum Eraser has left the toilet and uh, and done a runner. <laughs> God, I know. I feel sick. It's just disgusting. <sighs> yep. Can't emphasize enough how bad it was. Yep, I know. It was absolutely horrifically bad on every level. <sighs> I'm just glad the people at home can't smell it. When I was watching it, I was embarrassed. Yeah. I'm... What? Wait. Why were you watching him? You know what? Never mind. Move on. Anyway, back to this photograph. So in summary, this photograph is clearly not the norm. It shows obvious signs of being hugely, hugely distorted due to refraction, especially on the oil platforms themselves. But when this is pointed out to Quantum Eraser, do you think he acts honestly and acknowledges this distortion? Or do you think he does everything he can to avoid talking about it? The argument isn't in regards to the oil platforms, right? The argument is solely the horizon behind the second platform, which everyone can see. I don't care if there's a Chinese Superman on a hobbled refracted unicorn wearing a tutu on these platforms. Don't care. That's not the argument. If you bring it up, it's a red herring fallacy. That is a diversion or irrelevant. So to cut this short, if you're one of the flat earthers who's been spamming my comment section with the term black swan, you really need to have a long, hard look at the people who are peddling this nonsense to you and really question, have they got your best intentions at heart? And if you still think Quantum Eraser is worth listening to, let's remind ourselves of how articulate and scientifically literate is when it comes to debating the flat earth, specifically the time where he was debating Jose J.G. Gonzalez, who had brought to him fantastic observations of a lighthouse which clearly showed obstruction due to the curvature of the earth. Let's see how Quantum Razor could handle that. It's a lighthouse and you can keep it's it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. It's All right. Beautiful. That's number You're one retard. I got. Physical Stone curve. cold retard. In a, and we got a bunch of houses appear to be built underwater, but they are really not. High up the water. All right, I'll mute myself, Nathan, you can present. Go ahead with your evidence, with video footage evidence of the shape of Earth. Can you present one of your trusted source, please? Or at least one. Shut the fuck up! But, but I just want to know, can you provide, can you show... Yeah, you're asking the same thing again. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, Quantum Eraser at his finest. Let's get some comments. Chat. Box. Travel. Space comma. Now, last time out on Chatbox Travels, we had Johnny Ami Jusapants trying really, really hard to leave me an insulting comment that made sense, but he just couldn't quite get it right. But this week, after reviewing some of the comments on an old Kent Hoven video, it appears that I missed some of his attempts. So here he is again. Okay, it's me again, Johnny and my Jussie Pants, but this time I'm going to come back and I'm going to write a comment without any mistakes, Nate. You ready? Here we go. Inamptic... Oh, no. Right, let's give this another go. Oh, I wonder what that caps lock button is for. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, cats got destroyed like usual... Uh, uh, Alright, number three. Wrong, liar. Hovind does understand evolutions. Uh, comma, full... Sp not working out is it okay I'm only having one more try right uh, the goals oh we'll just ignore that bit uh, 67 is way smarter than those that what does this caps lock button do uh, anyway that like this lying video those six oh no it's not good is it okay this really is it the last try if I don't get this right I'm gonna give up right I'm just just forget about capital letters we don't need those let me let me see what I can do I see you cannot handle the truth. You are just butt hurt that I expose you for the liar that you are. It's going well so far. Uh, you cannot prove me dead wrong. That that one worked. You cannot show us any body parts revolving in real time, piece by piece, by random chaotic chance. I did it. Take that, Shakespeare. Well done, Johnny. You got there in the end, nearly. And I, for one, am so proud of you. Uh, next up in the comment section is somebody who thinks they can have an entire conversation with me without the need for me even being there. You'll see what I mean. Yes, it appears that he will ask me, what is the radius of the Earth? I'd then reply, 3,959 miles. He would then say, great, and ask me what the geometrical drop over a distance of 110 miles would be. And then we will go on and on and on until eventually he proves the Earth is flat. 
You know, I wonder if that conversation actually would go that way in real life. I guess we'll never know. Hello. Hello, Flat Earth Data here. What's the radius of the Earth? Shut up. Okay, sorry. Hmm, yeah, maybe it wouldn't. Uh, next up is somebody who's going to teach us a little bit of Flat Earth Astronomy. Hello, my name's Gurley Wabonga, and how about this for some random words just put together? Okay, according to Globbers, the Milky Way must split apart at the equator and spin off an opposite directions lol. And there you go, you learn something new every day. Now it's time for somebody who arrived in my comment section with what they thought was a killer argument before instantly regretting it when they realised that perhaps they should have actually learned something about their argument before they presented it. Hello, my name's Dali Barwina and I've got a point that no globe tar can ever explain and that is gyroscopes. Yep, yeah, try it. So what I think he's saying here is a gyroscope on a rotating Earth would have to show some sort of drift as the Earth rotates. Or maybe he's saying that if we use a gyroscope in something like an artificial horizon on a plane, then as the plane goes over the curvature of the Earth, the gyroscope would somehow need to be corrected. But I don't need to answer that because... Well, because everybody loves balls has already explained the answer to him. And that's that any kind of gyroscope that's used over a long distance does need some corrective mechanism, such as pendulous veins, or any kind of gyroscope with sufficiently low enough friction will demonstrate a 15 degree per hour drift as the Earth rotates. So what do you think his response to that was? Do you think he gave us maybe a masterclass in physics that shook our core understanding of gyroscopes to the bone? Or did he do this? Wrong. Yeah, you know what? I've seen that type of argument. Somewhere before. It isn't. Moving on, channel favourite Steve Forster seems to have yet another unanswered question kicking around in my comment section, and he still can't seem to get his head around that a vacuum is an absence of pressure. All right, I'm back again and answer this one, right? If if a vacuum is not a pressure, then why do astronauts need spacesuits? Yeah, can't answer that. Yes, what a mystery. I cannot think of any reason at all why an astronaut might need a spacesuit. Uh, anyway, what is the biggest globe proof? Your head. Yeah, you see what I did there? Because, like, you're bald and it's kind of round. Now, I'd like to finish this video by advertising a new debate channel that myself and fellow YouTuber The Creaky Blinder run. It's called Agree to Disagree Debates, and I've linked it in the description. Now, very kindly, a flat earther has been on my channel and left a pre-launch review. And I must say, he makes it sound fantastic. See you later. Cats, cats. Conspiracy cats No one quite like him To flatten the flats So come feel the vibe Like and subscribe And take off your hats